بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم we have integral x from 0 to infinity square root of x e to the minus x the q function of the square root of 2x log x the q function is the complementary cdf of a standard gaussian random variable q of y is 1 over square root 2 pi integral v from y to infinity e to the minus v squared over 2 the q function tends to 1 as y tends to minus infinity it is equal to 1 half at 0 and then it tends to 0 as y tends to infinity the first step here is to define big omega of alpha as this given integral but i insert here the parameter alpha in the interval from 0 to 1 the integral of interest is omega of 1 using the definition of the q function this part of the integrand can be written as 1 over the square root of 2 pi integral v from alpha times the square root of 2x to infinity e to the minus v squared over 2. If we differentiate the q function with respect to alpha, which is in the lower limit of integration, we get minus 1 times the square root of 2x divided by this constant. Then we write the integrand replacing the variable of integration v by the lower limit of integration. v squared becomes 2x alpha squared. 2 goes away with 2 here and there. The first derivative of the q function with respect to alpha is minus x to the 1 half over the square root of pi times e to the minus x alpha squared. This means that if we differentiate omega of alpha under the integral sign with respect to alpha, we get minus 1 over the square root of pi integral x from 0 to infinity, x to the half times x to the half, that's x, e to the minus x times e to the minus x alpha squared, that's e to the minus x between brackets 1 plus alpha squared, then we have log x. To obtain omega prime, we make use of this integral, i of a and b, integral x from 0 to infinity, x to the a, e to the minus bx. This integral is gamma of a plus 1 divided by b to the power a plus 1. If we partially differentiate i of a and b with respect to a, the derivative of x to the a is x to the a log x. We get this integral, x from 0 to infinity, x to the a, e to the minus bx log x. The derivative of this ratio with respect to a is gamma prime a plus 1 times b to the a plus 1 minus gamma of a plus 1, b to the a plus 1 log b, divided by b to the a plus 1 squared, taking gamma of a plus 1 over b to the power a plus 1. As a common factor, between brackets, we get gamma prime of a plus 1 over gamma a plus 1, and this is di gamma of a plus 1 minus log b. We are interested in this integral for a pair of a, b values. If we go back to omega of alpha and we set alpha equal to 0, the q function at 0 is equal to 1 half, and we need the integral x from 0 to infinity, x to the 1 half, e to the minus x, log x. So we are interested in the case in which a is equal to 1 half and b is equal to 1. In addition, we need to obtain omega prime of alpha, which is proportional to this integral with a equal to 1 and b equal to 1 plus alpha squared. When a is equal to 1, we have gamma of 2, which is 1 factorial or 1. We need also epsilon of 2. Epsilon of z is minus small gamma plus summation g from 0 to infinity. 1 over g plus 1 minus 1 over g plus z. Replacing z by 2, we get this expression for di gamma of 2. Note that this is a telescopic sum equal to 1 over 0 plus 1, which is 1. We also have minus small gamma, which is the euler mascaroni constant. In this case, the integral is 1 minus small gamma minus log 1 plus alpha squared divided by 1 plus alpha squared all squared. When b is 1, b to the a plus 1 is equal to 1, log b is equal to 0. When a is equal to 1 half, the integral is equal to gamma of 3 over 2 times di gamma of 3 over 2. Gamma of 3 over 2 is 1 half, gamma of 1 half, which is the square root of pi. To obtain di gamma of 3 over 2, we consider the integral t from 0 to 1, t over 1 plus t. We can add and subtract 1 in the numerator. So we get 1 minus 1 over 1 plus t. The integral of 1 is 1. And the integral of minus 1 over 1 plus t is minus log 1 plus t. Using the limits of integration, we get minus log 2. This integral is 1 minus log 2. But we can also do the following. Since t is between 0 and 1, we can write 1 over 1 plus t as summation g from 0 to infinity minus 1 to the g t to the g. Integrating term by term, we get summation over non-negative integer g of minus 1 to the g times 1 over g plus 2. We can write the summand as two terms. In one of them, g is replaced by 2g minus another term in which g is replaced by 2g plus 1. We can take one half as a common factor. This part becomes 1 over g plus 1. That one becomes 1 over g plus 3 over 2. If we look at this summation here and compare it with this expression for the di gamma function, this sum is di gamma of 3 over 2 plus small gamma. 
this sum when multiplied by one half gives one minus log two, then di gamma of three over two plus a small gamma is two minus two log two. Di gamma of three over two is two minus two log two minus a small gamma. Integral x from zero to infinity, square root of x e to the minus x log x is equal to this product. We use this result here to express omega prime of alpha, which is this integral multiplied by minus one over the square root of pi. Now integrate both sides from zero to one, we get omega of one minus omega of zero equal to the integral of this function of alpha from zero to one. Omega of zero is this quantity divided by two. Thus to obtain omega of one, which is the integral of interest, we need to evaluate this integration here. To evaluate this integral, we need to obtain the integral alpha from zero to one, one over the square of one plus alpha squared. Do the change of variables, alpha equal to 10 theta, when alpha zero, theta is zero, when alpha is one, theta is pi over four. D alpha is sec theta squared, d theta, one plus alpha squared is one plus 10 theta squared, which is sec theta squared. In the denominator, we have sec theta to the power four. The integrand is cosine theta squared, which we can write as one half plus one half cosine two theta. Integrating, we get pi over eight plus one fourth. We also need the integral from zero to one, of log one plus alpha squared over the square of one plus alpha squared. We do the same substitution, alpha equal to 10 theta. We get an extra term, log six squared theta, which is minus two log cosine theta. Let's focus on this integral. Since cosine squared theta is one half plus one half cosine two theta, its antiderivative is theta over two plus sine two theta over four. Doing integration by parts, we multiply these two functions of theta and use the upper and lower limits of integration. When theta is zero, we have zero. When theta is pi over four, this bracket is pi over eight plus sine pi over two, which is one over four. Then we have log cosine pi over four, which is log two to the minus one half. Here written as minus one half times log two. We also have minus the integral theta from zero to pi over four, theta over two plus sine two theta over four, the derivative of log cosine theta, d theta. This derivative is one over cosine theta. And then by the chain rule, we have minus sine theta. To get this integral, we need now to integrate theta tan theta, theta from zero to pi over four. And since sine two theta is two sine theta cosine theta, then we also need the integral of sine squared theta, which is one half minus one half cosine two theta. So this integral times one half is pi over 16 minus one eighth. What about this one? The antiderivative of tan theta is log sec theta. We do integration by parts. When theta is zero, this is zero. When theta is pi over four, we have here the square root of two, which is one half log two. This first term is pi log two over eight. We also have minus integral theta from zero to pi over four, log sec theta. Minus log sec theta is log cosine theta. We can write cosine theta as the cotangent of theta times sine theta. We split the integral into two integrals. In one integral, we have the logarithm of the cotangent of theta. In the other, we have log sine theta. This integrand can be written as minus log 10 theta. Doing the change of variables, w equal to 10 theta. When theta is zero, w is zero. When theta is pi over four, w is one. Log 10 theta becomes log w. And d theta is dw over one plus w squared. W is between zero and one. We can write one over one plus w squared as summation g from zero to infinity minus w squared to the power g. We integrate term by term and make use of the result that integral from zero to one, w to the a, log w to the b dw is equal to minus one to the b comma of b plus one over a plus one to the power b plus one. In our case here, b is equal to one. So in the numerator, we have minus one times this minus one, we get plus one. In the denominator, we have two j plus one squared. This sum is one over one squared minus one over three squared plus one over five squared and so on. This is g. Catalan's constant. So integral theta from zero to pi over four log cosine theta is g plus integral theta from zero to pi over four log sine theta. The integral of log cosine theta can be manipulated in a different way. Let's do the substitution u equal to pi over two minus theta. du is minus d theta. When theta is zero, u is pi over two. When theta is pi over four, u is pi over four. We can use this minus sign to have our integral from pi over four to pi over two. Cosine pi over two minus u is sine u. Here is the same integral rewritten using the variable theta. But from here, we know that this integral is Catalan's constant plus the integral theta from zero to pi over four log sine theta. Since this integral is equal to this one plus this quantity, it can be written as the sum divided by two. When we sum and divide by two, we get g over two plus one half the sum of these two integrals. The integrand is the same. Here theta is from zero to pi over four. There it is from pi over four to pi over two. This means that integral theta from zero to pi over four log cosine theta is g over two plus one half integral theta from zero to pi over two log sine theta. Let's call this integral L. If we replace theta by pi over two minus theta, we get integral theta from zero to pi over two log cosine theta. This is also equal to L. We can write L as the sum of these two integrals divided by two. 
So L is one half integral theta from zero to pi over two log sine theta cosine theta. This is sine two theta divided by two. Applying the logarithm, we have log sine two theta minus log two. If we integrate this part, we get minus pi over four log two. We still have one half integral theta from zero to pi over two log sine two theta. The integrand here is symmetric about pi over four. One half times this integral is the integral of theta from zero to pi over four log sine two theta. Doing the substitution, v equal to two theta. When theta is zero, v is zero. When theta is pi over four, v is pi over two. The integrand becomes log sine v. d theta is one half dv. This integral is exactly equal to l. We now have an equation in l. L is equal to l over two minus pi over four log two. This means that l is minus pi log two over two. The integral theta from zero to pi over four log cosine theta is equal to g over two plus one half times this integral, which is minus pi log two over four. The integral theta from zero to pi over four theta tan theta is equal to the integral of log cosine plus pi over eight log two. Combining these two terms, we get minus pi log two over eight. Integral theta from zero to pi over four cosine theta squared log cosine theta is equal to this part plus that one. And now we know this integral. Combining all the terms, we get g over four plus pi minus two over sixteen minus log two times one plus pi over eight. We need to multiply this result by minus two to get this logarithmic integral. Given these two integrals, we obtain the value of the integral of interest.